Hey guys, I'm Russell Vane, and welcome back to another episode of the 25th Ward, the Silver Case. Uh, where we last left off was that we basically started Electride. <coughs> Excuse me, I choked on my saliva there. Um, yeah, where we last left off was that we started Electride, and now we're still stuck in Electride because basically we are going through a apartment, uh, floor by floor by floor by floor by floor. Looking for the solution and answers to where the heck I'm supposed to go or find, like, this particular, like, thing to each thing. To each thing. So, yeah, I forgot what the clues were from the last episodes were, but basically I looked up online. I, get, I, I took a quick glance on what the hell I was supposed to do, and apparently it seems like everyone said just brute force it, uh, or most of the players who've played it uh, on the surface level that I researched on was saying just brute force it, go for each clue that you you have seen or heard in this game so far, and then run with whatever you can. Uh, typically, they said that it would be the first door you see, like the first door you see in the floor is the first thing you will always have to look through for clues of the, uh, so it you so basically, they told me just to, they, the people just said literally just to go through the floor, and uh, go through the floor and just literally just ring the door, the first door you see, and then get a hint of what the, uh, what the characters are gonna say, or what the people behind those doors are gonna say. So I'm gonna have to take a guess and gander between all floors just to figure out what the hell I'm supposed to do. I know about them. I know about their, I know their secret. It has to do with the customs of this town. Codes that are that outsiders wouldn't understand, or like boundary lines. They wanted to set up their own special territory, I guess. Yuki Ishimura, Kaori Kuma, Kumai, and Sawako uh, Tokunaga were members of the Even Numbers Club. So that's a great clue right there. So three of these members that I'm looking for are going to be in Even Numbers. Of uh, they are even numbers of probably floors and potentially just rooms as well. It was a group of people whose apartment numbers all consisted of even numbers apart from zero. Oh, maybe we need to not find we might so even numbers or zeros cannot be considered even numbers in this case, then. So it's either two, four, or six, or eight. I'm sorry, my. I'm looking at my 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 OBS is just like so laggy a little bit. It's a little laggy for for how I'm doing my face cam. But anyways, so it's two, four, eight, six, and eight, and we're in the seventh floor, so it does, doesn't really count anymore. Anyways, they use the town's public space as their headquarters. Like secretly though, like like secretly though, you know. As for these three in the back of the relaxation room, there's a dead end hallway. That was their hollowed, hallowed ground. It was like there was some sort of magnetic field, like an invisible force field, or something preventing other people from entering. Yuki Ishimura and Sawako Toku, Tokunaga were also members of another group as well. The Corner Room Syndicate. Their apartments were corner rooms. Oh, so that gives me more clues on what the hell I'm supposed to look for. So the prices were higher than other apartments. That's like a status symbol in this town. Ka Kaori Kumai must have been lonely. But what's strange is that Kaori Kumai was also a member of yet another organization. What the hell? Why is these three like so involved in weird groups? It's called the Earth Federation. Why does that sound familiar a little bit? It's composed of residents living in the single-digit floors, between 2 to 9, uh, which are the closest to the ground. After meeting Genko Sudo in the Federation, he might change somewhat. Just a little bit. She, was, she wasn't able to eat ginger, but she became able to eat it. And Orkra, and ok Okra, too. I have no idea why or how. Maybe she suddenly got really into vegetables. She probably had a little garden on her balcony, found a little tiny bit of happiness, searched for recipes on the internet, and spent her days cooking them up, warming her, warming up her household. I can't tell whether it was Genko Sudo that was 
making her happy or what? Okay, so that's a lot of clues in one conversation right there. I, I, I don't understand it, but that's fantastic. All right, cool. So basically, we need to find a single digit that's an even number. So it's, it eliminates a lot of different floors for me on uh, finding Kumai, Coyote Kumai. So second floor, fourth floor, sixth floor, or eighth floor will be the numbers that we can only look at to decide where, where the hell Kumai would be. Um, and she's not in the corner room, so she doesn't go anywhere in the background, uh, all the way in the far corners. The other two do kind of follow the four corners, so that makes sense. Um, and then, of course, one of the other guys that the that the name that we're looking for is also within the two and ninth floor, between two to ninth floor. But we don't know too much information on that person who's, uh, I think was pseudo pseudo. We don't know how much we don't know too much about pseudo and how that person influences Kumai, but. Uh, it seems like pseudo is somewhere between second floor and ninth floor between those two numbers um, Since we're in seventh floor, we're kind of in the even number or we're in the odd numbers section. So My best get is my best guess is fourth floor for now and checking out fourth floor first because We'll have to check all the even number rooms in order to figure out uh, Where Kamai actually like where she's actually lives in but then how do we know if we found the right room though. Like, is the d door gonna be ajar? Maybe. Uh, both are. Both don't have even numbers. Not enough even numbers. Let's look at the left side first then. Man, this is gonna be rough because I have to find like all the. All the rooms, I guess. How do I know if I can move in there? I wonder. Nobody. Oh, I'm pseudo. Hey, we found pseudo randomly. <laughs> we, found, we randomly found pseudo. That's so random. I'm pseudo. How can I help you? Ah, I see. It's so sad losing her. I have nothing now. I have nothing now. There's nothing left in my heart. Oh, about the neighbor? Genko and Kumai were close. They were always talking about bringing things up into space. By space, they meant the top floor. Apparently, they worshipped Yuki Ishimura, who lives up there. Kanako Sagaya, who was called the Home Garden Monster, was also really enamored by the top floor. Now I feel like having their recipes evaluated up to the top floor was pretty much what they lived for. Just... I don't want to badmouth anyone, but I feel like Natsuki Shizu Shimi Natsuki Shimizu and Harui Kuzunaga had had something to do with Genko's murder. I'm trying to think about Genko a little bit more, but anyways, this is just a hunch. But I feel like something really dangerous about those two about those two. It may just be my mistake though. Might be my mistake though. I'm trying to think. So they're saying that the person is in the higher floors, but they're in an even number floor as well. Corner room. So we're, we're so the person they worshipped is basically already a dead giveaway for where we might be going here. It looks like. But we still haven't found anything about, uh, we still haven't gotten anything much about, I'm gonna take a gander here, it might be 70, might be 70th floor maybe, I'm, I think I'm, I've went to 70th floor before in the last episode, but I might be wrong. Um, but yeah, like, it seems like we haven't, we haven't found Kumui, but we do, or Kumai, but we haven't, we do know what she would be. She's basically in the middle. She's either in floor two, four, six, or eight. We still haven't gotten anything out of that, but we do have. We did have a talk with Pseudo, which is nice. Um, no, definitely not. Oh wait, though this is the odd number. Oh no 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 no. We need to go to an even number. So seventy would not be it. It would be eighty. Eighty. Eighty-one. Or 60, 68, 66, 64, 62, 60, and then everything in between the other 
between 50 and 30s are like not counted for as well. So let's try the highest, second highest floor maybe. Because we really went to 68. Definitely we really did. Because I accidentally went to 68 by accident. But we'll go 66 because I didn't go to 66 last time in the last episode. Yeah, this is a really tricky puzzle though. It's a really interesting tricky puzzle. But it gives you all the clues you need technically in a sense. And it makes it much more e like interesting for me to, to continue this the way I did. So we need to find a corner room, basically. Uh, yeah, because it's all the way in the corner, it seems like. Like where the dead end space is. Which is basically like all these like things all the way down here. Why does it seem like it's getting a lot more scarier to just go down to these, like, ending hallways? Wait, which floor- what room was this again? Oh man, I didn't even look the number completely before I even clicked on anything. Probably nothing. Are you a detective? What, a coincidence? A detective was just here earlier. Said they were looking for Harui and Natsuki. Uh, so you're looking for them too. They, they're they real harpies. Natural born harpies. Committing a sh insurance fraud and acting as middlemen for new illegal drugs. They were even selling them too. They had a shop where they sold cell replication enzyme water, you know? I guess they had a lot of clout and were pretty clever. And they were pretty threatening too. They were really in the crap. But usually doing this that sort of business, people start talking at some point, right? But you never heard rumors about them. It's strange. By the way, maybe the day before they disappeared, Harui and Natsuki were uncharacteristically scared, saying they'd be called on up to space. Looks like not even those two could stand up to Yuki Ishimura. They must have been into some really sketchy stuff together. Six, sixty-six, oh, thirty-two. Yeah, no, no, that's an odd number. It says thirty-two, right? Yeah, it was thirty-two. Shoot, I gotta probably go the other way then. I have to go all the way on the other corner of the side here. I mistakenly thought that was the number, but it seems like it wasn't. But it still gave me a hint that says that this is not high enough. Like, the floor that Ishimura would be at is, like, all the way to the top. So 80th floor was definitely the place I needed to go to, but I just didn't know. I was very coincidentally close to knowing that it was... I was coincidentally very close to the answer there, but by accident, mostly, rather than by chance, it seems like. Let's see if this is the room that I need to go to, or if this is a room that I could go into, or something I can go into right here. Conveniently, this has triple sixes in their numbers, but we'll see. Okay, there's no other commands beyond look. Okay. Nada, okay. All that for nothing. Alright, cool. Let's keep it moving, I guess. Yeah, so far I'm not- I'm, I mean, it's really interesting that they're making me go through this whole thing, but I'm- at the same time, it's a little bit tiresome because you have to, like, click on the same format over and over again. It's not really fun or easy to go through at the very least, but it's really intriguing since it's a puzzle mixed in with like so much options to deal with and so much or so little clues to deal with uh, my guess my biggest guess is 80. um i think kamui my biggest guess on kamui would probably be second or sixth but i think she's on the second floor i feel like because kamui would be like the closest to the floor and that's probably why she worships she worships uh ishimura so strongly i feel like 
if I go to the right, it would be it would have an odd number in, in in the room count. So I would have to go to this one here because this is the only room that has like a non single digit or non uh oh no, there's an odd number sixteen because it has a one. Oh man, what's wrong with me? My brain is so stupid. I should have known. So it might be a room next door to it, maybe. Yeah, it might be the one of the rooms. Oh no, it wouldn't be either. Yeah, it has to be all odd numbers. So it has to be somewhere around here then. And it doesn't count zeros either. Zeros are not counted for as odd or even. <sighs> Let's try this room. So you've come all the way here. Good work, detective. Or maybe I should call you Kamui Urehara. Forgive, forgive my late introduction. I'm the Yuki Ishimura you've been looking for. We've met before, a long time ago. Do you remember? I don't remember, and I think that's part of a different branch story that's that we haven't get that we haven't even got to yet. Like I know it's probably in one of the. It might be either placebo. I think it's definitely placebo, but it, it might be either placebo or correctness. I think, or matchmaker. Sorry, matchmaker is the the second branch. Uh, second branch of the thing. I see. I guess it makes sense that you wouldn't. I was sort of one-sidedly targeting you, after all. In the end, I wasn't able to adjust you guys. My boss was really mad. Oh. I'm not going to kill you here. Taking you on and take you on unarmed would be reckless. Let's get down to business. Kanako Sugaya, Natsugi Shim Shimizu, Harui Kazui Kazunaga. Kaori Kamai. Sorry, I don't know what the heck that was. That was like a rumble to the tumble. That was my Discord. I cannot see that for now. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to deal with that after the recording. All right, sorry. I'm looking at the times to see how long I've been through this. Genko Sudo, Sawako's Tokunaga, Mai Natsuki Natsu Natsuyaki. I had adjusted all of them, so that means they're all dead, isn't it? Adjustment means death in this game, pretty much, if, if I recalled it, because I haven't played in so long that I might have forgotten some of the terms that they use here. This was the result of gathering a huge number of opinions stating that I should do so. Those who would disrupt order have no place in this town. Those women perpetrated all sorts of crimes, big and small. But the crimes all felt the same size to people. Conning people out of money? Leaving bicycles and umbrellas in the public space? Ganging up to bully people right out of town? Smoking cigarettes on the balcony? Setting up a murder to look like a suicide? Also, the smoking part makes me think that Kamui might have been smoking on the balconies while she was planning her plant, maybe? Could be interesting. Interesting uh, hypocrisy or irony for giving up life with smoking and giving life by planting the plants is a very interesting thing. Anyways, having a barbecue on the roof, it's all the same. People only think of crimes as crimes. In, decent, in densely populated places, all crimes carry the same weight. Maybe it's a bit sad that people aren't able to forgive people. It is true, actually. I think it's hard for people to forgive people nowadays. And this game kind of points that context out, or that kind of... Uh, interesting like idea out like it doesn't really the, you don't really see a lot of people forgive other people nowadays and the point in case nobody forgives any other person once given that they know about them uh rarely would you see it some people do forgive people but it's like very hard to know um anyways but the view is really great here isn't it i'm protecting this town up from here on the top floor with lovely views you've already met with nakane right he is the future incarnate. You must have felt it too. He's pretty much the only human being who can create per permanent peace. The pretty much part is an assumption. I have yet to meet any human who can surpass Nakane. So. Anyway, in order to achieve his ideals, I have made a request to the divers. 
Don't you think it's absolutely wonderful that people like us aren't who aren't considered fit for this cursed society can become one of the most important components of fixing who it's broken about the 25th Ward? We plan to turn this town into a utopia under Nakane, a place where people can feel comfortable and safe being administered. All lives in this town will be blessed, and these lives will be fulfilling and long, and then they will die. We will create a world without crime. We're working towards the same goal as you, the police. We need to keep outside elements like that Kurumizawa Kuru guy from being born. A, necess a necessary evil, necessary to uphold order in this town. That's what we are. Anyway, let's leave all the bull crap at that. Please, go back to my Natsu Natsuyaki's room. The first room you touched. 69005. There, you'll find traces of Kumu Kurumizawa. The next time we meet, I hope I'm unarmed again. Such a strange lady, but at the same time, that's interesting that I finally found her. That's really interesting that it's 8 triple eight, uh, 8 8. That's the number, okay. So anybody who's technically stuck, obviously, use, use this video as a guide if you need to. But at the same time, anybody who's like, who hasn't owned the game or haven't played the game or isn't willing to try the game out, I recommend to try it out. But at the same time, I think there's an achievement to just kind of achieved for just walking around everywhere and getting lost and wandering. I think it's like, I don't know exactly what the numbers are for the miling, like walking around, but uh, yeah, it's just interesting that you can walk around and get an achievement for just spending so much time walking around. <laughs> All right, we're here. I mean, I went to the 69th floor previously, but I wasn't sure if I clicked on the room I don't think they would even allow me if I was to find the right room. Yeah, now it makes me wonder, what happens if I did find the- clicked on the room by chance? Like, what happens if I clicked on this room by chance? Because I forgot what the room number was for the person. And I ring the doorbell. I wonder. Okay, let's see. Wait, what? So, you came here after all. Do you remember this number? It's, a, it's your administration number. That's right. This is the correct answer, Kamui. Wait, what? This is the correct answer? I'm so confused. Oh, dear God, that's, that's a creepy ass picture. I'm from the, I am from the post office. I've got the delivery. I'm reading it like a robot kind of thing. It's like, whatever. Um, this is the post office. Is anyone home? Jesus. Are we inside the build? Like, are we inside room 69005? Don't try to pretend you're not home. Please open the door. Please listen to me before things get really ugly. If you won't open the door, I will. I can't be held responsible for what happens. Whatever may happen, whatever you do, you can't run away. You can't escape this town. Don't try anything reckless. The residents of this district can must follow the rules of this district. Have you forgotten that this was one of the required conditions for living here? Listen, if you can't follow the rules, and then you will have to be prepared to face the consequences. Those who can't face the consequences of their actions have no place here. Adjustment will be required. Adjustment will be undertaken. Please open the door. Adjustment is necessary. So this guy's just here to deliver death to this person, whoever is behind this door. <laughs> You're the one who's gonna be adjusted. Oh dear god. So the detective shot his head and he closed his eyes like this, like... That's weird. 
So it's these assholes after all. I guess we're gonna have to shake the nest out a bit. Wait, so she finally found me? The detective finally found me, I guess? Udahara, I'm all done here. How are things on your end? Udahara? Respond. This is Kiryo Nagi. Hey! Oh, this is, a uh, Jabroni. Kurosan, it's me. Jabroni? What the hell are you doing here? Doing there? Sorry for worrying you. I'm not exactly effing worried, but what the hell are you doing there? I'm really sorry. Wait, this is him on the radio, right? So let's, let's, let, I, I want to see if I can do it in a radio effect. I highly doubt I can pull a radio effect on the audio, but we'll see. I want to be, to at least call you, but the timing just wasn't right. Or rather, I would be more frustrated with myself for not being able to get into the proper conditions to call, you know? As an adult, I really wanted to handle this properly, but I guess that's all so just sounds like excuses. Mother trucker. Screw your excuses. Just tell me where the hell you are. Or tell me what the hell you're doing there. I processed you, Urahara. What? Why? He was Kamui. He was Kamui? And how the hell would you know that? I gained the ability of observation. It's like a special power or something. Okay. Observation? What the hell are you talking about? What in the, what in the world have you been doing this whole time? Huh. Answer me. I met with Kuru Kurumizawa. That's all. You're still young, Jabroni. Getting so influenced by others shows how young you are. Kurumizawa swallowed your ass right up. That's not true. Please, don't berate me so much. I actually beat Kurumizawa. He lost to me. I don't give a damn about wins and losses. But this sort of thing is important to a man. That's why men are absolute garbage. Fair. I mean, fair enough for her to say. I mean, she's not a man, so she's fine. Always looking for a goddamn fight. Kurasan, you're pretty battle-ready yourself. That doesn't mean that's the same thing. There's meaning to battle. It's not just about winning. But now all I can do is win. Hunting Kimui is like my job. Observers are basically a system of keeping the balance. I finally came to understand that. I hope this effect actually works, because I, I like doing this to, see, to, to make it sound like it's a radio thing, but I highly doubt it works. Anyways, I'll, I'll listen to it while I'm editing, but I highly doubt it will work. I truly guaranteed I did not make it sound like an actual radio sound with hands, which it would have been great if it sounded like radio through my, my hand gestures, but it's whatever. Jabroni, what the f are you doing? Me? I'm... Ah, sorry, I'm running out of power. Kurasan, just one more thing. Oh, what? I... I think he's about to say he, he was he was going to confess his love to, to Kuro, Kuro-san, for sure. I highly doubt he wouldn't do that. I, or I, I really doubt... I wouldn't... I totally think he did that. Would have done that. Alright, who the heck is this the postman who just literally got shot or somebody else? I wonder. There are always more accidents on days when the wind is strong. That's one thing I've learned in my 30 years on this job. I've come to many conclusions over the years, but none of them ever mean jack crap. At the same time, these 30 years have also taught me this one worthless man also means absolutely jack crap. There aren't many things you can accomplish by stacking up smaller things. 
The motto, the motto, build these small conclusions and work hard and. That's a word I've never pronounced before. Asterly, I think. Asterly used used to be the source of my will to hard work. But now it just feels empty and meaningless. The moment it started feeling meaningless, that meaning meaningless grew exponentially and overcame me completely. This lonely emptiness feel freezes my heart over. When I feel the autumn breeze, the omen of that meaninglessness pains my entire body. I can't take it anymore. I want to fit into society. I want to become a part of society and be one of be on the side of that brings chance. I want vindication from the bottom of my heart. Something in which I can feel pride. The only thing that satisfies my cold, empty heart is being a delivery man. No. Also, being a delivery man means you're killing people too. So I don't think that's really a great way to fulfill your, your heart's desire, honestly. That's the weirdest thing to say. This sort of campaign isn't going res isn't going gonna resonate in with me, with anyone. Also, what the hell is with that tagline? What's even the point of that? This needs to be fixed. Ad copy is something that flashes in front of the public's eyes. So it's like electricity in that it needs to flow instantaneously. Don't just give people a bunch of bullcrap. Find the exact points and bring them together. Do you know Raquel Me, the soccer player? Bringing the points together requires precision like Raquel Me. That guy is a beast. You, you need to be a beast when it comes to getting to the point. I mean, we're pros. So let's work like pros. You're misunderstanding the meaning of promotion. What ad agency is this? It's Dento. This is supposed to be a positive campaign for the Postal Federation. This can't be a dental job. <laughs> That's only on the surface. We need the power to twist the facts of those delivery men going out of control. I don't know actually I actually don't know who's speaking here, so I'm assuming it's the guy on the motorcycle speaking, and then there's like whatever speaking on the side, like the dental thing, probably with somebody else or some something in his mind. So I'm just reading it off like that. Power. We need power. The power of love. This promotion needs to be lighter. Something more body. To play to the desires of the public. Send the positive message that the delivery men are here to protect the people. Excuse me, I'm just like burping. <laughs> that they're white knights. Get a bunch of juicy gossip out there. The kind of crap that, that'll get these victims to stop thinking of themselves as victims. The goodness, the good intentions of the delivery men cause a tragic accident. This is the perfect chance to appeal to the people's good sense. You gotta make them think, but comfortably. Use an optimistic topic to get people to think. People get caught up in thinking and repeat the same meaningless cycle without realizing it. They need more stimulation. You gotta aim for the people out there who are starving for stimulation. This is how you run a campaign. You gotta control the people. When people move, the world moves. That's our job. Adjust the people, shake up the world. I don't know what that was, but I'm guessing they were showing a piece of what the Postal Federation is going through to try to convince people to join them for a quote-unquote righteous cause is what they're looking to be like for that particular portion there. All right. And that is going to be where I'm going to stop at for now because I am running out of time. And I really wanted to end it somewhere but I didn't know where exactly so I just wanted to finish that little weird ad dialogue thing that they were doing but yeah in the next episode we'll go ahead and continue this uh in this next in the next episode we'll continue into this particular uh electrolyte branch or episode or chapter sorry and um see where this kind of leads us because I don't know where we're going to be ending off at with this episode or with this 
branch. No, this episode, yeah, because or chapter, sorry. Um, yeah, because I'm mixing chapters with episodes, but it's like I don't know, I guess. But yeah, so the, this chapter will probably end very soon. It feels like because we already got Jabroni back, sort of, kind of, but he's there to eliminate Kamui, which was interesting. So. Maybe we might have to revisit some other branches to kind of see what the hell Kamui was up to and what he did overall, but I just can't remember what Kamui did back then. I remember we recorded an episode for that, but can't remember much now. Uh, yeah, so in the next, next episode, we'll see what happens with Jabroni's conversation with this guy and uh, Kiro, Kiro-san, and then uh, from there, it's whatever happens then. But other than that, that's it for me in this episode, and... Hope to see you guys in the next episode of Any Minds. Hope you guys have a great, amazing day, week, and night, or whenever watching this. And that'll be all. So, Roz, out.